So something's been happening on this island. Oh, by the way. Hey guys, Bottle Top Hornet. All that jazz. And I'm thinking it may be reason enough to give our islands a name. Because you see, this guy here and those guys over there are not our only friends we've had visiting. Because there is something about this place that just causes Endermen to spawn. They're everywhere all the time, picking up blocks and just wandering my base. And I don't know what to do with them. They're everywhere. And it seems like every single time I log in to play, there's just more of them there. So, I think the Isles of Ender. Maybe. What do you guys think? Let me know. Because I think... They're not the only guys I'm going to get. And over time, I'm going to build up a huge supply of Endermen. And I'm going to try and capture them in boats. And keep building up my army, I suppose you'd say. And I think maybe eventually I could do something with them and put them somewhere. But that's not what this episode's about. <laughs> so I have been doing a little bit of work off camera. And I want to show you something special. Because I've prepared a little bit of a space for today's episode. This over here. So we did our storage room up top over there, the automatic storage, and I had the little room on the other side. I thought, you know, I'd make a uh, a barracks in there, like I said I was planning, but it just didn't seem like enough room. And I'm really happy with this. I opened this area up, followed the line of my cliff down, and actually built up the uh, the sort of stonework to make it look like this was part of a cave. And then we've, this isn't necessarily final, but we've blocked off the water leading out into our little, our little, uh, waterway? I don't know what you call it. In between our two islands. And then I'm thinking down here is where I build the sort of barracks, almost like a smithy, I suppose you'd call it. But I mean, come on. There's something about how this whole area is becoming like visually more striking there's just more like sight lines going through it and i'm already just imagining the the flooring being filled in down there and the distant view of armor sets and whatnot through the gaps i just really excited and i have another a couple of other plans for things that i want to do one of them being I really don't know how to fix up this area as far as getting down, and it just looks unfinished. And I kept finding myself, I always pop across onto this and access the uh, barrels on the sides. So I think what I'm going to do is actually remove my beds from there and make a bedroom in there. And we'll create a drop with a water elevator coming back up down to our mines here, and then create a far smoother just staircase down into this open area, almost like that side there, but on this side. So I'll do that spread through this episode. But the thing I want to focus on first is this area. And I think I've left you guys out of enough of the building that I've been doing. So what I'll probably do before I get into the actual mechanics and building up this armory is just pop into a time lapse of finishing up this floor, getting the uh, room down there properly set up, and also going up top, and I do want to finish decorating around this automatic storage system. We've actually, since I spent a lot of time doing all this and just a little bit of time AFKing as well, we have started to build up a really decent... Oh, we've even got two full chests. Yes, a really decent supply of, uh, of gunpowder and also, of course, this which I can trade with my... Uh, cleric villagers down there. And we're also getting a good supply of bones. Wow. <laughs> that's unreal. Great. This is definitely a slower farm. I might have to add like another layer to try and speed that up. But in reality, I'm not going to be using too many rockets to begin with, even though I'm low right now. If it becomes a problem in the future, I'll just expand the farm. But yeah, so I'm going to pop into a quick time lapse of me just doing up this room and getting the sort of skeleton of everything set up and then we can actually pop back in and have a chat about what my plans are and how I want to set it up. So enjoy that and I'll be back with you in a moment.
and welcome back. So, I'm kind of really happy with this. It just, it's, it makes this base feel so much bigger. I just love this sort of coming down and this feels like a grand hall with all these archways, but that just becomes this sight line all the way down there. There's so much depth created by having these different layers coming through. And all of this up here, the detail of this floor, I did change that. I ended up making it follow that because it seemed that going the other direction just kind of made it a little bit too noisy and it's already very noisy. I mean, I just made this up completely as I went, trying out something new as far as like a build palette. So I've never actually made a floor out of like basalt and, and andesite and all these things, but I think it's okay. It's deliberately different. It's not meant to fit in with the rest of the base necessarily. It's like a different layer. This breaks it up and then brings us back down to our standard like dark oak. So this down here is where I'm going to build my armory. And I think I'm going to call it an armory because not only is it going to be armor, like literally armor, but also arming my player, like me. So there's going to be stuff for tools, swords, and, uh, and armor and everything down here. Now, one of the things that I need to work out how to do, because I don't know if I've ever actually made one, I, I must have, but I need to make armor stands. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't actually know the recipe, so I'm going to have to scroll through all of this and see whether I can spot it. Okay, so either I'm blind or I don't have it in my crafting menu. And I think I'm just going to have to Google it to work out how to make it. So give me a sec. Yep, I was right. <laughs> I, I have never had to make anything like this. Because, oh, I've already got stuff in here that I can use. It requires smooth stone. And I'm old school Minecraft, so for me, stone is smooth stone when I think about it. Okay, what's that doing in there? Uh, but it's actually, nowadays, you actually smelt up normal stone to create the smooth stone. And then it requires, uh, to make the armor stand, we need some smooth stone slabs. So I probably actually need a little bit more. That should be enough. Because one of the things that I want to do, and, oh, I forgot about this. While I was doing it all, I got a rare boy. So can I pop up and see him? This guy is wearing entire, I named him Bob because I wanted to make sure he disappear, didn't disappear. He's wearing entirely enchanted gold armor. So I was like, oh, I have to keep him. I have to put him somewhere in the base. So he's in there stored away safely for whenever we decide or work out a place that we can put him. <laughs> but one of the things that he reminded me of is that I want to get full sets of all types of armor. So I want to have an unenchanted version and an enchanted version of every single piece of armor. So for things like diamond and whatnot and uh, netherite even, like it takes time, but it's easy enough. The one thing that I'm going to struggle with is probably the chain mail. And as far as I know, the only way I can get that is maybe from some loot chests, but mostly from dropping, uh, from drops from mobs. So I'm going to have to do some searching over time and slowly build that up as far as getting myself the full sets of all types of armor. Now, in this chest here, I've definitely been collecting these bottles of enchanting. So after we've set up our armor stands, I'm going to create myself a custom mending station in the center there. So I want to be able to walk down, possibly step inside onto a pressure plate, and that pressure plate activates a bunch of dispensers, which will shoot those out in rapid fire, and it'll basically continue to shoot until I step off the pressure plate. That way, with like specifically with this for now, but whenever I have a an enchanted item that needs mending, I can stand in there, watch the mending, uh, watch the durability bar on it go up and up, change over to anything that el like anything else that needs uh, mending, and then just mend everything up, step off, and it should stop fairly much, fairly much, <laughs> but.
basically straight away fairly much. I don't know what that means. But yeah, so that's my plan for that. But first of all, I want to get the armor stands in and our little almost armor cases or uh, you'll understand when I make it. So now that we have this smooth stone and smooth stone slabs, we can make... Oh, I need a bunch more sticks. We can, though, make our armor stands. Now, let me count. Let me think. We have one for leather, one for iron, one for chainmail, one for gold, one for diamond, and then one for netherite. So that's six, question mark? Yes, six. I don't know why I doubted myself. So we want a total of 12. Now, I need to make sure. Do we have six on either side of there? Six blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, good. So I should be able to fit six on either side and make that back wall our armor stands. Now, for these, I think what I want to do is put them up on a layer of glowstone so that it really lights up the uh, display cabinet, I suppose you'd call it. So if I do that... Yeah, lovely. And then I'll probably put in some wooden stairs like this. Yeah. Okay. Give me a second to put this all together and I'll see whether I can make up these cabinets in a way that looks half decent. Okay. Took me a little bit. I just wanted to make sure that I definitely got it worked out in a way that I liked. But as you can see, this area here, I'm going to be putting the uh, the device in there. <laughs> the device. My custom-made XP device. <laughs> uh, all the redstone stuff should be able to pop in behind all of this somewhere. But as you can see over here, I've decided that this side here will be weapons. So I will have a sword of some form, a bow and a crossbow. And then over on this side, I want tools being the pickaxe, the shovel, an axe and a hoe. So this is sort of like the display of tools and armor. Now I'm going to have to obviously break through each time I want to uh, put a piece of armor on there, but that's fine. And eventually we'll have a really cool looking display of I think I put the uh, I would put the netherite there and there and sort of down going down to leather on the outsides being the sort of strongest to weakest strongest being near our main station. So I'll grab I might go up and grab a couple of the pieces that I have so far and see what we can fill in. Which side do I want to be the enchanted? Oh dear. That side. <laughs> I think I'll put the enchanted on this side. So I'll grab what I have and uh, we'll see what it looks like. And after scrounging through all the pieces that I could find in storage, this is what we have. So not quite a complete version of the uh, the unenchanted chainmail, but complete versions of the main base ones. And obviously I don't have any spare netherite yet. But over here as well, we have a full enchanted diamond just need to get a couple other pieces and I literally had no enchanted iron gear but that should be easy enough to make since we already have 74 levels if I wanted to I'll just make up a set and give it simple enchantment so it's got the shiny special look so I think with that and these tools other than a hoe and a crossbow in there I think now we're going to pop into here and see if I can come up with a design that will work for my mending machine and I think what I really need is probably about three dispensers for this idea that I have. But I'm sure I've tried this before and it didn't work unless I had full durability bows. So I'll make the bows up like that. Three should do. And then we'll see what we have in here. Oh, I already had a dispenser. Fantastic. <laughs> That's all right. So we grab some redstone and we'll see if we can make up some gear. I'll get all the redstone collected and then we'll go down there and try and make a contraption. So all I need to do now is create myself a little bit of space to see if I can uh, work out my my device. Now I haven't actually tested this in the creative world or anything like that. 
I think I have the idea in my head of what's required, but we're just going to wing it and see whether we can make it work. I don't really know much about redstone, but I should be able to at least make this happen. So basically, what I want to do is create a little platform to stand on. So my main goal is to step up onto this pressure plate like this. Now, I don't know if I like that like that. I happen to have exactly three stairs, so perfect. Now, I probably want to make the rest of it out of that quartz brick, so I should have some left up here. Yep, perfect. And what I want to do is make it so that my dispensers all face into me, and I think one of them up there like that. So I should step in here, and all three of those fire using these observers being pushed by sticky pistons. So now what I have to do is block this in. <laughs> like, I'll do it on this side, I think, like that. And I'll just leave that there. Now I need to work out how to make observers trigger these all at the same time. So for starters, if I put an observer facing... That is not the correct way. <laughs> Let's try this. No. <laughs> okay, so I want it facing the complete opposite direction. Like that. So the first one wants to go here like that. And it'll get pushed by that. Okay, so that one is in position. Now the other two are going to have to be just a step back into this area here. So if I go like that, grab my... Oh, that doesn't... Yeah, no, that's correct. <laughs> These ones want to go here. So their faces should be facing out that way. Oops. Like so. And then... No. <laughs> I think I should make a torch in there and yeah that's facing the correct way now I've just got to dig myself out of here okay so all of those are facing the correct direction now my goal is to get them all to fire at the same time and to do that, I might need another sticky piston. I'm going to have to have to see. So, we know that standing on this triggers the power going through there. So, I can hide that underneath these bricks on that side as well. The next thing I want to do is make it hit all three at the same time. So, how do I achieve that? If I put... Let's just do some testing... If I put power up to there, okay, it fires off the one. How about if I power this block like that? Okay, I don't know how that works, but it works. Uh, it might be, I've heard this before, quasi-connectivity. So, all I need to do now is achieve one more like this no uh how about like this no definitely not hmm something like that maybe <laughs> If there's anyone watching this who knows redstone, they're probably going to be absolutely disgusted in me. No, nope, that definitely doesn't work either. How about... If I... Get one more block like that... Hmm. This is probably horrible for people who actually know how to do redstone. But it's it must be like watching a... Uh, 
a toddler trying to work something out. <laughs> but if I go like this, that should be all three. Sounds like it. Okay, so in reality, I don't need this because that changes all the delays and stuff. Lovely. So, with all that said and done, I'll just make sure all of this is lit up in here. Block this in like so. And then we'll, how do we want to stop the top in? Probably like that. Almost walked into my fire. And now what I'll do is I'll grab a handful of these enchanting bottles. And we'll give it a try. We'll see whether it works. <laughs> From the outside, it looks pretty. From the inside, eh, not so much. So what I'll do is all I'm going to have to do is manually restock these when it gets low. I'll have a chest nearby somewhere. I'm not entirely set on this fireplace thing in the middle. My imagining was, you know, it was like some forge, but then this ended up turning into more of a display room rather than a functional creation of tools and armor. So I might, I might remove that and create a little workstation in the middle instead. But with those in there like that, 191 durability on this pickaxe. See if I can line myself up. They shoot straight past. <laughs> okay, so. Maybe they all need to be facing downwards. So three across that way instead. Should have probably tested it in a world first, in a creative world. Yeah, I'll save you guys the uh, pain. I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll be back once I've got it sorted. Okay, thankfully that was significantly easier to uh, set up as far as getting them all to trigger at the same time. So now, uh, I probably want to put that in evenly. So if I just, oops, <laughs> if I just set that up so that they're all in here like so, it's kind of hard to to see the, the bottles number, but okay, set them up like so. Even though it healed a fair bit of it before, we put the tool in our hand and... Okay, so I definitely didn't need to stay on there for that long, because I would have continued to gain XP. Wow, that goes for a while. <laughs> okay, and done. Alright, so it'll come down to learning the timing of that. Definitely goes through the items, but hopefully I might be able to set up a system over top where they constantly refeed back into that through hoppers. So that should be an e I'll have to be careful of that. That should be easy enough to set up as well. And then I can have a input chest somewhere that I directly feed my bottles of enchanting to. In fact, if I wanted to get super serious, I could almost create a water stream going from somewhere over in our villager trading hall. If I just pop over there, I could quite possibly make like a little corner here that uh, like say the dr a dropper right there that I throw the bottles of enchanting onto and then it carries it through a system over there. Uh, we'll see. I'll think about it <laughs> in between episodes, but it's not necessary. It's not necessarily necessary for, for today's episode. So yeah, I think that's definitely working. Let's have a look and just see what it looks like. The whole thing looks pretty pretty neat in my opinion i turned those off because the uh the smoke was just annoying me and i do think i'm probably going to end up changing the way that i've got this set up i'm not going to have a fireplace there so i'll get rid of that and i'll create a little uh station here to store spare armor spare tools and uh yeah i'm kind of happy with it i like the look of this this is a little bit you know not necessarily medieval I don't always go medieval, but there is definitely a medieval style to my build. So, 
hmm, I need to put stairs like that over there and definitely do something with those as well. But yeah, I mean, it just, it adds this strange, different kind of style to it all that, that creates a, a def definitely for me at least, a, a different feeling to everything else. And I've sort of been thinking about the possibility of some sort of law for this island. And like at the start of this episode, I was talking about the Isle of Ender. I think I said Isles, but I meant Isle of Ender. The Isle of Ender being some strange happenings, bringing Endermen to this island, maybe some strange magic. I don't know whether you guys think about that sort of stuff when you're creating your worlds, but I like to, I like to sometimes think, think up like a, a bit of a story so, uh, sort of encompassing the reason why I'm building things. And I like the idea that this was maybe set up as a research station of sorts, like an outpost that grew. Is there an, a second? <laughs> Guys, this, this is what I'm talking about. While some point while doing all that, another Enderman has hopped into a boat over here. So then there's definitely some strange power going on in the background that I'm not aware of. And it, it lends itself to ideas for me of what I want to build. Because before, you know, doing some of these episodes, I was trying to come up with ideas for, you know, what is, what is future episodes going to look like. And I think I mentioned maybe building up a, an island there connecting this point over to a tower. And I was like, Wizard's Tower, you know, Research Tower trying to hone in on the Ender powers that are bringing Enderman to this island. And that means that we can incorporate the Ender Dragon egg into the center of that tower as well. So this is just sort of how my mind comes up with the ideas for builds that I want to want to accomplish. And I have this vision of a tower where the center is actually split up and almost hovering apart from each other with the Ender Dragon egg in the middle, creating this, uh, I don't know what to call it, almost like an observatory that is used to draw energy from the surrounding area and see whether we can do researches around the, uh, the Enderman here. I don't know where that guy is. Somewhere in the center of this I need to investigate. But that gives me a bunch of ideas on how to continue to expand this entire island and the builds that I want to put on there, i.e., as I was talking in another episode, how there may be a port over here, and that's definitely if this area is looking for imports and exports and research teams, there would be a dock here with access from ships coming in from different areas. And if there's ships coming to the island, maybe there needs to be a lighthouse or something along those lines up here and then the island wants to become self-sufficient so we build a farmhouse and crops area all these things just continue to spark my imagination how do how am i stuck here <laughs> spark my imagination about what i want to build next and, and what i want to do for the future of this series and i would love for it to reach the point where this island is so densely packed with buildings and farms and different law friendly uh, buildings that from the outside it looks absolutely incredibly detailed but for people who've been following along with the let's play it's all going to make sense and everyone's going to be clued in to what the reasoning behind all of these buildings and and structures are and that kind of really inspires me to continue this series like almost for 50, 100 or more episodes. And I feel like a lot of that can be done purely on these islands. Like, it sounds ridiculous, but there's so much detail we can add to this. And I'm so used to building in other Let's Plays, no, not Let's Plays, other playthroughs where I play and not film. I'd build big structures, but I'd end up spreading out and trying to just use as much space as possible, where I feel like with this one, I'm definitely starting to densely pack and use up a lot of the area. And it's not like I'm saying things are all crammed together. There's obviously large open areas like this, 
but it's like there's so much already on this island and I want to add so much more and all the details and little walkways that I've started to work out will lead themselves to different buildings and functional buildings. I want to make a a brewing building, a possibly a large library of sorts, especially if this is like I'm making up for the law, a research island. It, <laughs> I hope this makes sense to everyone. I'm sort of rambling out loud. I haven't put that much thought into it other than what I'm actually saying right now. You are experiencing the raw, unfiltered, oh, I don't know how you'd say it, just imagination that is me. <laughs> but I suppose all that rambling aside, I have achieved what I planned for this episode, which is an armory, showing off some of this stuff, and most importantly, our automatic mending station. And off camera, I'll hook up a, a chest or something from somewhere around here that I can put all of those bottles of enchanting in. And I know that if I go out and do big missions of uh, huge resource gathering and whatnot, and I have like a full hot bar worth of tools that just need desperately to be mended, I can stand in there, gather a bunch of experience, step out and let that absorb into all of my separate tools. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm really proud of this area and this idea even. I'm so used to building XP farms like Ender, Enderman farms or gold farms to do the, the mending of my tools. But I like the idea that it's all here and I don't have to travel to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this build as much as I have enjoyed building it and showing it off. And I think in the next episode, I want to work on getting myself the two extra suits of netherite armor. If not more, I would like to get a heap of netherite. And let's see, actually, because I haven't checked this since I've been doing a lot of work in here. We should have enough. We definitely had the two. We're well on the way to a third where you've got a decent supply of gunpowder. I can actually combine that with all the sand that I I got from digging the, uh, the beaches off these islands. And I can set myself up with a huge supply of TNT and we can really have a good crack at collecting ourselves a bunch of ancient debris. To do that, I think I want to start off my nether hub. And so next episode, we're going to pop into the nether and do a bit of renovating of my spawning area inside, just inside from the, the nether portal. And we'll tidy that up, make it safe, get ourselves set up so that we can pop into the nether without having to worry about getting hurt or <laughs> hopefully not having to worry about mobs and whatnot. And then from there, we'll go out and see if we can collect ourselves some ancient debris and set ourselves up with some, hopefully some spare gear. And not only spare gear, two extra spare sets of armor to put in our armor stands. So with that, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did and you haven't already subscribed, I'm really working hard to improve my episodes and hopefully, you know, make stuff that you guys enjoy. So if you are enjoying it, hit that subscribe button and there'll be plenty more to come from from here. Leave a like if you did enjoy this episode as well and please take care of yourselves. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>